Um, I'm delighted that you are here at the free virtual retreat, Infinite Life Force, Reduce Stress and Supercharge Your Energy to Thrive. I'm Corinda Taylor, your host, and hopefully you've carved out some time just for you, free of interruptions, and make sure you've got a journal and pen handy because I'm sure you're going to want to take some notes. Now, I know there's a fair amount of unrest and uncertainty in the world at the moment, and this is causing people's stress levels to increase. And I've created this retreat so that you can learn energy techniques that will help you reduce stress. And they go beyond the standard strategies of diet, exercise, and sleep. Today, my guest, Nidu Bikapur, is going to help you to do just that. I was called to invite Nidu to the retreat as I've had private sessions with her in the past and find her technique, the decrees, fascinating and very beneficial for my own well-being. So who is Nidu B. Kapoor? Well, she is a moon worker, blocks buster, retrograde specialist, 5D expert and lover of exclamation marks. And Nidu B. Kapoor is owner and sharer of the world's fastest, quickest, swiftest, speediest, easiest, simplest healing modality, the decrees. This life scientist has the ability to decode messages of individual energies as well as universal energies of our time with the decrees. She brings a unique blend of technology to give you the quickest way to heal, shift, change and transform your life, your relationships, your health and your wealth. Deep and complete healing work takes anywhere from eight months to three years, but with her work, it takes seconds, minutes, weeks, and just a few months. Often called angel and magician, Speedster is her middle name, and thousands of people around the world vouch for her and her work. And I'm certainly one of those people. Today, Nidu will be sharing her knowledge and benefits of the decrees as an energy method. Welcome, Nidu. It's absolutely de delightful to have you here. Thank you, Corinda. <laughs> absolutely wonderful to be here as well. I have to tell you one of the things that I absolutely loved about what you're doing is the name of your program, you know, the Life Force Retreat, the Life Force Delhi Summit. I think that's absolutely incredible. And I also want to tell you that where I am, it's 11.11 right now. So, so an angel is watching over us and somebody is, is having their eye out on us right now. So that's wonderful. It's wonderful. And Thank you. Um, yeah, I mean, life force, you know, life force is everything. You know, we have life force, we have health, we have life force, we have wealth. You know, life force, in fact, in, in, in my culture, it's called prana. And, you know, chi, pneuma in Japan and Greek. And life force is the force with which you manifest things in your life. Hmm. And, and the fact that you are asking us to take a look at this life force and enhance this life force and take away all the things that are diminishing this life force, especially, especially in today's world, I think it's absolutely wonderful. And I know that I am also going to be listening to your other guest speaker. So this is this is the need of the hour, Corinda. It's so good you're doing this. Thank you. Yes, no, I'm very much called to to be here to share these energy techniques, and it's just wonderful that you've joined us along with the other master teachers. So thank you yeah. very much. Thank you. So <laughs> <laughs> go, go go for it. Go for it. <laughs> um. Can you tell us a little bit more about yourself? You know, how did you get to where you are today and, and how do you serve? Well, on, on radio many, many years back, the late, great Farooq Sheikh, who's a fantastic actor from Bollywood here, he was asked this question. He was asked, he was asked how did you become an actor? And he said, and I'm going to translate, and he said, and what that means is, he said, you know, people sing and sing and sing and they become singers. And I acted and I acted and I acted and I became an actor. And, and my answer is, is similar to that. I practiced and practiced and practiced and became a practitioner. 
like the esoteric sciences, the mystical world, the secrets of life, the universe, God, energies, all of these have always fascinated me. And, and it was just a matter of time before my interest in them started becoming methods to use for myself. Like when I first understood numerology, when I first understood the chakra system, when I first understood, in fact, prana and life force and what was going on with energies and what these energies are and how these energies work, because there is a, there is a law to how energies function. So, so, for example, the biggest principle in energy is that energy must flow. See, as long as energy is flowing, life is flowing, love is flowing, money is flowing, love, I'm just going to say it again, love is flowing. As long as everything is flowing, we're good. When we flow, we have a constant updated life force coming to us every second, every minute, every morning, every day. So energy must flow, keeps our life force and these little, little laws, little secrets, little principles of energy, as I started understanding how, how the universe functions, how life functions, how my life has been functioning, what it means when my son's not okay and I'm triggered, you know, what it means when, when my family wants me to do something and I do something, and what it means to be able to, to master the art of bringing in money, manifesting money. A lot of these took place over, over years. So my life to where I am has actually just unfolded. There's been learning, there's been unlearning, and I have been my own biggest practicer and client. Everything I do, first I do with myself. In fact, in fact, when I first started, that's all I was doing. I was actually working on myself, and then you know how it is, right? You like something, you want to tell your friends, you want to tell your family. And I was sharing with my friends and I was sharing with my family and my friends sent me some more people. They said, speak to her, she'll, she'll, help. she'll help you out. And I started working with people, I started working with people, I started working with people until that final one message that came that said, hey, I loved this. You got to charge for what you're doing. And that hadn't even crossed my mind because to me, it was all part of the unfolding. It was just part of understanding the work that I was doing, energies, deeper and deeper. And then when I understood that, oh, this is something that, that is part of my work now, that this is where I've been brought to. And then I started putting a price uh, and value to what I was doing. And here I am. That's really a wonderful story. And that's, that's why you would call yourself a life scientist as well, because you, you had to do the experiments on your, on your own that's life. True. Well. That's true. You said it, my girl. I'm a little bit of a nerd, and I'm a little geeky in in my uh, in my approach to life. And I like to understand things. I like to break them down. I like to simplify them. And I think that's that's also one of the reasons why why the decrees showed up because the decrees are so simple. You know this, Corinda. They're so easy. I mean, they take a second to apply, they, they take a second to experience, they take a second for shifts to show up, and they take minutes and hours for the external reality of our lives to reflect that change of vibration in us. So as long as it's quick, as long as it's simple, I'm all for it. <laughs> like that, like that, like that's that's my that's my game. Like it has to be quick, it has to be simple, and it has to be easy, and it has to show results. Yes, and that's why I was so drawn to you because I've been like that myself, you know, experimenting on myself and I was always looking for what will help me shift the fastest. So that's why I was so drawn to your work. <laughs> and okay. I, I'm completely the same. I've experimented very much on my own life with um, energy healing and things like that before before I've, you know, stepped out and shared my my methods as well so <laughs> wow. thank you so much and the other thing that really resonated with me when you were talking was flowing because I really see that as a feminine uh, quality a feminine energy which I think we need more of you know to create balance in our um, active modern day life as well <laughs> learn how to flow 
<laughs> correct, correct. And that is so correct, Corinda. Thank you so much for bringing up this aspect of flow because there is a transition taking place in the world. Uh, January 1st, 2019, Earth ascended and, and humanity is following. You know, we are, we're, we're catching up. And, and this ascension really is the, the shift from a masculine paradigm to a feminine paradigm. And, and an English teacher once told me that it's masculine and feminine. So I'm just going to say that again. So a shift from a masculine paradigm to a feminine par paradigm. And what that means is not that it's the end of men as we know them, or it's the end of masculinity as we know it, but a little bit of the softness, the gentleness, the lightness, the nurturance, the care, the co-creation of, of the aspects of the divine feminine. All of these are part of ascension. And I'll give you this other thing as well. When we flow, there's always a sense of lightness. The masculine paradigm by its very nature, by, the, by its very yang nature, tends to be a little more solid, a little more rock-like, a, uh, a little more stubborn, a little more resistant. Whereas women, because of their emotional nature, and emotional has to do with the element of water, that, that addition of flow to how things are is really what ascension is all about that lightness, that smoothness, that ease, that sense of care, that sense of love, nourishment, nurturance. Like how, how does one country coexist with another? And there's a certain way we've been living. It's a way that's really not working for everybody. And slowly these realizations are coming into politics. They're coming into economics, where, where what we want to do is is create a world that is based on this caring and sharing. And yes, you're, you're so, it's, it's wonderful, Gorinda. I learned something from you today. Thank you. This, but there's this feminine aspect to this flowing. Yes. And that is part of attention. And I will, yes. yeah, and I'm going to just jump into it because I feel like this is so right for that. And, and one of the things, actually one of the biggest things that stops the flow that stops the flowing from taking place is stress. Yes. You know, it's, there are a number of things, but at the bottom of them all will be this stress. Mm. And, and, and if we are to ascend, and not if, if we are to ascend proactively, because everybody will ascend, but those of us who are being proactive about it will ascend faster. And if we are to proactively ascend, Stress cannot be part of that. Mm -hmm. Stress, in fact, you know, it is this heavy energy. It is this dense energy. It brings us down. And ascension is about feeling this expansiveness, about the possibilities, about the lightness, about the brightness, about the brightness. You just feel, you just feel at ease. You just feel good. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm so glad, you know, Corinda, that you've, you're, you've made an entire jelly summit around this, made an entire platform around this because I do believe that that one of the things we all need to start watching out for is how we've made stress so normal in our lives. Like we don't even question the fact that there is stress anymore. And this is detrimental, of course, detrimental to our health, to our wealth, but it's detrimental also to our spiritual growth. It's detrimental to to what we came here to do because Earth is a school and life is a teacher. We came here to grow. We came here to be further refined. Stress does not allow for any growth because the nature of stress is, is, a, uh, is a tight contractiveness. In fact, the word stress comes from the Latin stringere and stringere means to tighten. And those of us who've been living with a lot of stress because there is this tightening constantly taking place there's ache in the body, there's pain in the body, there's fibromyalgia in the body. The body itself starts contracting because that's what the tightness is, right? And the mm. moment you start contracting and you're contracting and you're contracting, what's going to come in? What's going to flow? There is no flow in stress. And when you're not flowing and life is not happening, 
love is not happening money is definitely not happening and you know how it is for india there are there are multiple reasons in our industry right there are these receiving blocks there are these giving blocks there are these limiting beliefs for sure and all of them need to be taken care of but at the root of all of this is stress no matter what you do about your limiting beliefs about your blocks about your stuckness if you do not release the stress in the body the results will be limited and and you will feel like oh i worked on this i felt better something happened it's happening again because the stress which is the tightness inside has not been opened and released you are not fully in the flow unless you have removed stress from your system and and i just i just want to raise such a big red flag to making stress normal and i'm not even here to say manage stress i'm not even here to say handle stress i'm here to say that you got to bust the stress out yesterday like you got to get it out of your system it's you know uh, the father of stress research and uh, dr hans selye and dr hans selye very very noted prolific a prolific contributor to this particular research to around stress and he as a doctor noticed something he noticed that no matter what the illness or the disease was in the hospital for these people there were some common characteristics with everybody everybody looked a little pale everybody didn't have enough energy everybody felt a little demotivated everybody went through a period of weakness and so he inferred that no matter what you are going through there is something else that you go through with with simultaneously and he called this word stress you know and uh, although there is a story which says that he regretted calling it stress because stress actually comes to us from science it comes to us from physics where stress is the measure of force on an object and in physics you measure stress and in physics the result of stress is strain and between stress and strain the object gets deformed can you imagine this is happening to us mm. we don't realize it because a lot of stuff first takes place internally before it becomes audible and visible to us in our bodies there's a lot that our body processes without us knowing but this is what is taking place there is the stress there is the strain and there is the deformation mm. you know in fact and then dr dr selye went on to do these other experiments with rats and i hope that he was gentle and he found out that that it wasn't the illness or diseases that was killing the rats it was stress that stress was causing the death so it this association stress strain tightness contraction death all of these you can see they are the opposite of flow mm -hmm. there is no ascension if there is stress there is no lightness whiteness brightness if there is stress mm -hmm. you know and and which is not to say that stress is a bad thing it's not because the whole point of stress was actually a response to threat in the environment like primitive man like the neanderthals you know for them it was about being alert for let us say a sound in the bush because a sound in the bush meant a dinosaur meant a predator mm. and therefore the stress response which is the response of fight or flight showed up so that in that split second we could decide whether we want to stay whether we have enough weapons whether we have enough support to take on the predator or whether we should just turn around and run out of there yes so stress is always a response to threat mm -hmm. and a response to threat means the body is now preparing to survive the body is now preparing to be able to live 
So stress always means that in the body is an alarm around dying, around death. And I, you know, look at it, Corinda. When we have a headache, is that the time we're at our best? Clearly not, right? Like it's a headache. It's just a headache. You're not even unwell. You're not even ill. It's a headache, like a cold. A cold can make us so miserable, right? We're mm. not at our best at that time. Now imagine in stress where you're living under the fear of dying. Maybe it's not a conscious thought, but that is the body's response that, oh my God, I am going to die. What can I do now? Right? So we have two options. And over time, we started having a third option. And the third option is the option of freeze. Because mm. in the nanosecond, before you decide whether you're going to fight or whether you're going to flee, there is a moment of decision. And for a lot of us, you know, when we are faced with, uh, with screaming parents, with violent parents, with abusive parents, with, with uncaring parents, as a child, we have neither the option to fight or to run. So that moment of decision started becoming bigger and bigger in our lives. We started freezing because we could neither run nor could we fight. Hmm. And the more we freeze, the more we freeze, the more we freeze, the more we freeze, the more stuck we are, the tighter we are, the more contracted we are. No flow taking place here. What you want is to be able to let go of that, of that stuckness. That stuckness of trauma in the past, abuse in the past, violence in the past, whether it happened to you or whether you saw it happening to you. Because then you live with the fear that it could happen to you. All the ways that we felt threatened in our lives. Of course, we need to start working and clearing that. But mm. the thing that happened along with that is that the stress built up in the body. And now with all of that unresolved, when you are sitting in an aeroplane and a baby cries, it can make you want to snap. Like it can make you cranky. It can make you furious. And that's how then you get off the flight and go on to either your work or to meet people. Stress needs to be dealt with, released, removed on a daily basis. On a daily basis, you always want to be open to life and not guarding yourself against the threat of death, which is what the body goes through. In ascension, in ascension, the stress response will start calibrating. You know, a presentation has the same response in our body today as us in the forest hearing a loud sound. So a presentation has become today's dinosaur. Dealing with an unhappy, unhappy, stressed family member has become today's dinosaur. But this calibration, recalibration of how appropriately you respond to a certain situation. It's not life and death. It's not a baby crying on a plane. It's not life and death. If, if it's too hot and you've got work to do, it's not life and death. But we can get agitated. The Wi-Fi goes off for one day. It's not life and death. But of course, we all, we all respond like that, like that to it. And by the way, by the way, now, Corinda, by the time this airs out, Mercury will be retrograde. So the levels of stress and impatience and irritation will be a little, a little higher. And I can't yes. wait to share with you how simple it is to take care of this. It will take you less than one minute a day and you will feel the results immediately. And you will see the changes taking place in your day on the same day. Within minutes, within hours, you will see how the lightness whiteness, brightness, brightness of life is flowing through you again. Wow, that was so fascinating to hear your, um, you know, perspective on stress and, um, and also the science behind it. And um, yeah, I'm familiar with the, the threat response and 
yeah. how um, we can, you know, be the volume of our threat response can be far too switched on. And just as we've created the switch to be too far on, we can also reduce the volume and we can equally uh, remove stress from our lives. And um, yeah, I really, really enjoyed listening to share so much wisdom on stress and stress can show up, you know, in many ways, can't it? Uh, yeah. would, would you be able yeah. to tell us, tell the viewers, you know, how it can show up in their lives? Um, you know, if, because there's yeah. myriads of ways. <laughs> so true, so true. You're absolutely right, Corinda. Many ways that stress shows up and, in be and because it in fact shows up in many other ways and forms, we don't realize it's stress. For example, FOMO, you know, which is a word that's entered our lexicon over the last couple of years, the fear of missing out. FOMO is a huge stress. Insomnia is huge stress. Overwhelm, overwhelm carries so much stress. Panic attacks. All panic attacks carry deep stress, insomnia. Insomnia is 100% stress. And you know, so sometimes you think, oh, I'm worried. So it doesn't cross your mind that stress is playing a role in the body because you're thinking worry, but actually you're quite stressed. And in stress, the thing is, stress is not one thing. It's a compound of many things. Stress has multiple fears, little bit of anger in it. So sometimes, you know, like for example, if you're waiting for a package and the package doesn't show up and you get a little, you get a little angry, you don't realize that while you're waiting for the package to show up, the stress has been building up as well. And the anger aspect of the stress could be revealing itself. Irritations. Like if you're prone to feel irritated, guaranteed there is stress existing and you're living with it in the body. If you're prone to impatience, you've been living with a lot of stress because in stress, our tolerance levels become zero. Then we can't wait. Then we must have it right now. Like even if we don't know what it is, we wanted yesterday. So stress can show up in multiple ways. If you are unwell, you are in chronic pain, there is illness, there is disease, 100% there is stress being played out that along with whatever it is that you're doing to reduce your unwellness and return to homeostasis and a fabulous, a healthy body, you've got to take a look at how the stress has piled up as well. In fact, and I must also mention this, there is also something known as good stress. So you have two kinds of stresses. You have the good stress, and this is the inspirational, motivating stress. Mm -hmm. And then you have the bad, dark, negative stress. The motivational stress is like, is like if you are at the start line and, and the gunsman gun is going to go off, there's something that starts building up, right, in the body. Your body starts preparing for the dash. Now, that is also stress, but that's a good stress. So the moment the gun goes off, so do you. You take off. And you will also notice that sometimes, sometimes you wait for a little pressure to build up before you do something. Like in marketing, we always say, if it wasn't for the last minute, nothing would get done. <laughs> because the pressure builds up to the last minute. And then that pressure galvanizes us into action. In the body, the stress response and the excitement response is the same. So good stress is what excites us is what motivates us. It is what gets us down to taking action. The bad stress, the negative stress, the dark stress is the one where when you think about doing a task, you want to slump. When you think about dealing with a certain person, you think, oh God, not again. This stress builds up. When you become an avoidant personality, so, for example, if you have OCDs, OCD, by the way, is a form of stress. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a stress which is very acute and linked to the fear of life and death. In fact, if you notice, if you, if you, if you stop yourself from acting out on your OCD, there's been so much panic in the body because the, 
the understanding in the body is if I don't do this, if I don't check the door 20 times, if I don't switch off the gas uh, 30 times, and if I don't send 10 more people to check if I really switched it off, I could die. That's what's going on in the body. Where you're living in this, in this, in this dying, dead threat constantly. Mm. In the dark, negative stress, this is the stress that starts building up. And then it becomes anxiety, and then it becomes an OCD, and then it becomes this avoidant personality behavior where you'll just stop avoiding certain things. Like I was giving this example of a young girl went for this bike ride with her boyfriend and they had an accident. And in the stress and the trauma, what built up on that is I never want to get onto a motorbike again. You start mm -hmm. avoiding certain situations because that's your way of avoiding the threat mm -hmm. of life and death. And of course the motorbike accident because it's an accident and it's physical would have definitely actually made it feel, oh my God, I'm going to die. Mm -hmm. And then the stress response in the body makes us want to contract. We contract in, all, in order to keep ourselves safe, you know, playing possum. So we roll over and hope that we are not seen. So bottom line, we got to release the stress. We got to let this go. It's a good stress, encouraged, needed. It will happen. It's that other dark stress that we want to make sure that, that we are continuously releasing. The stress that makes us want to hide be invisible and shy away from the possibilities of what could happen if we have the strength and the confidence to take it on, including making certain decisions. You know, like for example, when we are financially stressed, we will stay in jobs where we are unhappy. And of course, that just accelerates the pace of what stress is doing in the body. Because stress, stress means aging. Stress means no growth, mental growth, emotional growth, definitely not financial growth. Stress means no digestion. You know, when we are stressed out, how the stomach tightens. And remember from the Latin word stringe to tighten, your stomach tightens, right? So your digestion gets hampered. In chronic stress, invariably there will be digestive projects. And the other thing that stress does not allow happening is reproduction. So if you've got something going on with your, with your period cycle, if you have something going on in your PMS, I guarantee that stress is hiding in all of these symptoms. So one more time, bottom line is stress gotta be busted out of the system on a daily basis. That's wonderful. Um, I really appreciated hearing all those examples. And I think the viewers will, you know, get a more complete picture of how stress can show up in the various ways. And does it apply also if you procrastinate as well? Because I often hear people feeling like they put things off. <laughs> oh, and thank you so much, Corinda. I didn't bring up procrastination, but yes, it is one of the ways that stress shows up. You know, we procrastinate because of that. When, when we think of a task, we become like this. There isn't enough energy to get the task done. And it could be for multiple reasons. Maybe we don't have the support to get the task done. So then we are thinking, oh my God, I have to do so much on my own. And then the slump starts again. Or maybe we don't know enough to get the task done. And then that can give rise to its own separate set of fears. Like, oh my God, now I have to learn. Now it's going to take me so much time. I don't know when this is going to happen. You know, all the ways that we start contracting and tightening is how stress plays itself in the body. Procrastination, depression. Depression carries a lot of stress. Leaving the body with no choice but to collapse because there are three, there are three parts to how stress plays itself out. There are three phases in stress. The first is the alarm phase. Oh my God, what am I going to do now? The second is the action phase. And the action phase is where you decide whether to fight or flee. The action phase is where you make a decision 
on what your action is going to be. If you avoid this phase, it becomes the fatigue phase, which is now the body holding itself tight against the threat, holding, 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 holding. How long can you keep holding? Then you start tiring, right? So the body starts tiring. Immunity systems start going down because all the immunity, I mean, all the energy that the immunity system requires to be working is now used up in holding the tightness together. So immunity starts going up, fatigue starts building. Chronic fatigue, adrenal fatigue, all of these carry deep, deep stresses. In fact, they carry the stress of having to say yes when you want to say no. Mm -hmm. This is very stressful in our lives. When we are not able to listen to our conscience, when we're not able to listen to our instinct, to our knowing, where all other kinds of fears have taken over and say, oh my God, I have to stay with this tyrant because I don't believe that I will ever meet anybody else again. And I'm already like 50 years old and 60 years old. Oh my God, I have to stay in this job because I don't know how else I can get money at the end of every month. Oh my God, I have to stay with my family in this house, even though I'm like 75 years old, because I just don't know how I'm going to make it happen on my own. Where we've given in to the fears and not listened to our authentic desires, to our instinct and our knowing. So first, the alarm, where, where you want to take action. Then the decision point where you do take the action and then once you've crossed the decision point and you stop taking the action, the collapse of your mental strength, emotional strength, lastly, your physical strength. And in all of this, don't even ask my darlings, your financial strength has gone to zero. Stress means no money. The more stressed you are, the more desperate you get, the more worried you are, none of these are energies to attract wealth. So if you have something going on, with money right now and you're not sure what the block is you're not sure what the limiting belief is just take a look at your stress levels work on that and i guarantee you you will start seeing money flows because remember love will flow money will flow life will flow thank you and why um you've got this great technique the decrees um which i think is just amazing for reducing stress and you know increasing energy as well so can you tell us a bit about how the decrees you know what they are and how they work <laughs> so a decree is literally that so a decree is something a judge pronounces and then he bangs his gavel so a decree is a pronouncement it's a decree is a command it's an order and it's an order that has to be carried out and the decree is a cosmic command. Once you have given this decree and you say the decree, once you have practiced saying the decree, you can even think it and things start happening. But for the first timers, if you're very new to the decrees, you want to be able to say it. Like no judge is whispering the decree, right? No judge is thinking the decree in his head. He speaks the decree. And the decrees are therefore spoken words. They are a spoken set of words. And they are words that make complete sense. So unlike, for example, um, let us say switch words. So switch words are words that, that may not have anything to do with what it is that you're dealing with. But the decrees, they are in English, have been translated in French as of now, little bit in Hindi, and, and yes to them being translated in many more languages. So the decrees are in English, they make perfect sense, and they work like this. Like Corinda, uh, and, and I know that you are going to be standing in and representing every viewer and listener. On a scale of zero to 10, where zero is not at all, and 10 is very high, what levels of stress do you think they might be dealing with, or that you might be dealing with right now? Uh, well, let's go with the viewers because my <laughs> my stress <laughs> levels are pretty under control because I have my daily practices. Uh, but I would say um, I'm picking up in seven. Let's go with seven. And seven stress 
means there are seven layers in this stress. So as you work on stress, a couple of layers will release. A couple of layers may say, hey, what's going on? And take a few more minutes to release. And a couple of layers thick and jammed and, and stuck there for so long will say, mm, what's going on? And may show up tomorrow. And in that case as well, you just say what we are going to say right now. And you're going to address the stress, which is the elephant in the room or, or not, you know, which we are seeing very clearly now. Stress, you can leave now. The decree is you can leave now. Not please get out. Not you can go. Not please F off. I've heard all versions. The decree is the decree and it must be spoken as is. It is you can leave now. So I just want you to try it with just saying it once. Stress, you can leave now. And because we said there are seven, it's seven on 10. And we know that this actually means a number of layers in the body, that there are seven layers in the body. We will say it seven times, one for each layer. We've said it once for one layer. Let us say it six more times. So stress, you can leave now. 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 And see how it makes you feel. Check also in the body. Is there a is there a part that's feeling a little open? Because remember, stress is about the tightness. So as you've asked the stress to leave, an openness will start in the body. Maybe you're breathing better. Maybe your shoulders have come down. Maybe you're just feeling a little calmer. Maybe your eyes just widened a little bit. Maybe your head is feeling a little clearer. Your lightness, whiteness, brightness, ripeness, your flows can show up in a number of ways, but you will be feeling something a little easier. Like intuitively, Corinda, where the viewers had this at a seven on 10, how much do you think it is right now? Uh, well, I certainly felt an opening. Uh, so I think that there's definitely been a reduction. And uh, I would say that it's now at uh, three. Fantastic. Fantastic. <laughs> and definitely, definitely write in and let Corinda know whether it is a three or not. Now, we brought it down to a three. We want to let this three go as well. And three is a small number right? Like seven is a big number. It's more than five. Three is a small number. It's less than five. So now we'll just say remaining stress, you can leave now. Like four layers have been cleared. Three layers are pending. So we will say it three times. Remaining stress, you can leave now. 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 And check how immediately better are you feeling? How immediately open and lighter and calmer are you feeling? In fact, you will also start feeling more energized because that is an automatic result of letting go of the tightness and the contraction. Because the moment you open, what's happening? The flows are happening. Flowing is happening. And when you're in the flow, energies are in the flow. Life force is in the flow. More oxygen is now in the flow to all your cells. Feeling more energized and better is an automatic fall out of giving the decrees. So the moment you have released, you're just that much more expansive and calm and like, bring it on. 
Yes, no, I definitely felt shifts going on inside my body and it was, <laughs> it was wonderful. It was, you know, the lightness coming in. So <laughs> the, the thing with stress is that because it has so many fears and there's the life and death, the prefrontal cortex stops working properly. And this is our reasoning part. You know, this is our analytical part. This is the part where, where we make our most reasonable choices but when when stress takes over that reasonableness has gone logic goes out of the window then it doesn't matter what what you do as long as you do something to let the stress go to to make sure that you get a certain result stress hijacks how logically you would have once thought so the moment you start decreasing stress, this starts working better again. And this is also the home of the third eye. It's the third of your instinct. It's the third of your intuition. You will start receiving messages. You will start receiving guidances. Suddenly a solution will pop into your head. Oh, maybe I should call my friend who I spoke to a couple of months back and I remember she had mentioned that she was setting up her own business. Maybe she needs my services as a web designer. Solutions will start popping in because when you're in the flow, then you're in the flow of the universe and the universe is in the flow of you. So the universe will start stepping in to make things start happening. You will start thinking, oh, oh, Maybe I should invest the money that I do have so that I can start building on it, you know. Or maybe, maybe I can start paying off my debt by doing so and so. Like answers will come, solutions will come, messages will come because the decrees are cosmic commands. When you open up, who are you opening up to? You're opening up to the universe. So the universe will come closer to you and guide you and hold your hand better. So not only are the decrees for letting go of something and naturally and as a side effect, manifesting more energy, but also a way to build your clairvoyance, your clairaudience, your clairsalience, your claircognizance. It is a way to increase your deeper psychic gifts. Yeah, and invariably you will get an answer. Like if you're so stressed out, and of course you could be very stressed out for something that's outside of you. Maybe you're stressed out because your child is not eating properly. And so you'll just say, I'm so stressed out. He's not eating properly. You can leave now. You know, I'm so stressed out. I've been waiting for this package for so long and it's not coming. You can leave now. Like whatever it is, you need not even identify it. You can just say, I'm so stressed out about this. You can leave now. If you, if you want to, if you want to uh, not have to say it, like check, oh, it's a, at a seven out of 10 or a three out of 10. As a principle, just do it 10 times. So stress, you can leave now. 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 Stressed out. You can leave now. Stressing out. You can leave now. Stressors. You can leave now. How is that? Like what we're saying is we're telling the universe that I'm commanding you now to reduce and remove the stressors in my life. So stressors, you can leave now. 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 Stressors. You can leave now. Stressors, you can leave now. Stressors, you can leave now. And you will hear quite a bit of this in the MP3 that you're going to be receiving because you showed up on this call. You are part of Corinda's family. So you're going to get this. And all you have to do is play it just once a day. If you can follow through with the words and say it for yourself, nothing like it. You miss a day, just 
in the morning just say stress you can leave now 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 and that's 10 times and you're done you're sorted before you go to sleep just say the day's stress you can leave now the day's stress you can leave now today's stress you can leave now today's remaining stresses you can leave now carrying today's stresses you can leave now 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 go to sleep and watch how your life changes in 24 hours and guaranteed in 72 hours you bring the stress down and the rest of your life will blossom and you will see you'll see it for yourself in 3 days have you ever heard of anything faster or simpler or easier or quicker no, it's truly amazing. And I'm <laughs> such a supporter of <laughs> the decrees. And that was just wonderful. And um, yeah, the viewers, you do have access to this wonderful gift from Nidu. And all you have to do is click the link that's on this page that follows the session. And you can have access to this uh, wonderful audio that will lead you through the decree process. Um, and it's it's not just for ourselves, is it? We can actually do it for others and um, pets too as well. Is that correct? That's correct. That's yeah. correct. At the same time, I do want to say that, that you want to go, you want to go to a doctor who's a doctor. You don't want to go to an intern and you don't want to go to somebody who's just learning and you don't want to go to a stressed, upset, angry, desperate doctor. So if you're going to play doctor in somebody's life, first, you wear your own oxygen mask. You make sure that your stress levels are down. So for example, uh, for example, Kulpreet. Now, Kulpreet is married to a man who's not very responsible. In fact, he's a little irresponsible. And she has two children. And she's not, a very, she's not in very good health, although she's, she's so much better now that she's been using the decrees. And she got extremely stressed and worried because her husband decide, was deciding to quit his job. And she was saying how, you know, she had, she had spent so much time and effort in making sure that he had a job. And now he was planning to just give up this job. And, and because Kulpreet knows that you're going to be the doctor and you want to change something going on in somebody else's life, first you take care of you. So... Kulpreet did this whole round with stress. You can leave now. I'm stressed out. He's going to do this. I'm desperate. He's going to do this. I'm so worried. I'm also worried for my children's future. My future. You can leave now. 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 In 24 hours, her husband decided to continue his job. She did not have to do specific work around her husband. She was the doctor who worked on herself. And because that's how, that's how the magic of energies are, that as within, so without. So as she cleared up all of this for herself, automatically the person in her environment also started showing changes in vibration and behavior and decision. You wear your oxygen mask and I guarantee you things will start changing around you as well. You take care of your stress levels. Even if there are unwell people around you, they will start getting better. Because your vibration, the stress is this, right? So it's a low vibration. It's a down vibration. So as you start uplifting yourself, as you start ascending, because ascension is the movement from low vibration, tight vibration, fear control-based vibration, to lighter, higher, co-creative based vibrations. So as you move yourself from here to here, everybody in your environment will also start to shift. And let us say we're looking at something very big, like somebody like, uh, like, a, like this person, uh, like this person, Kedar. Now Kedar's mother has Parkinson's. Now, obviously this is going to take time. And Kedar works on himself. When he's feeling a little calm, when he's feeling a little quiet, he gives the decree for her. My mother is Parkinson. You can leave now. So he does that. Just 10 times in the morning, 10 times in the evening. And 
he is seeing the changes and improvements that are taking place, not just in how she is, but also in how he is with her. So he's being more patient. He's being more loving. He's being more calm. Like he's not falling apart because she's having a bad episode. See, because this works fine and great and well when it's not taken over or hijacked by stress. You keep bringing your stress levels down. Definitely go ahead, be the doctor for somebody else. You will see magical results take place. Thank you, Nidu. That was really, really fabulous to, to work through those couple of examples. And um, again, for the viewers, you know, Nidu has a wonderful, wonderful gift. So please click the link and uh, receive Nidu's gift. And this has just been so special spending time with you <laughs> today in, and to discuss the decrees, which is just an amazing healing technique. Um, I trust our viewers will benefit a lot from the, from learning about this technique. And, you know, I'd love to hear from any of the viewers as well in the Future Transcendence Community uh, Facebook group about, you know, what's your key takeaway from today's session with Nidu? <laughs> so please come in and, um, you know, let us know what you thought. And I, and I would love to say hello to you there as well. I would love to read what you have to say as well. So, so please do come on and see you there. So thank you so much, Nidu. Is there any um, final thoughts you'd like to leave our viewers with today? Well, thank you, Corinda, and thank you, everybody. Thank you for staying. Thank you for listening. Thank you for understanding. And, and what I will say is that, that all we have to be is willing to, to have more and better and brighter in our lives. We'll never be fully ready, but as long as we're willing, we can have it. And now with the decrees, with letting go of all the tight, small, negative, dark vibrations in our lives, having more is just that much more simpler. One of the, one of the three golden principles that I always speak about in a lot of places, and I'm just gonna leave you with the first one, and that is God helps those who help themselves. And with the decrees, you are helping yourself, you are empowering yourself, and because of the way energies work, you are helping and empowering everybody in your environment. So God bless you, God and Goddess bless you. Happy Ascension, use the decrees, and I will catch you on Corinda's Facebook group. Big love, big hug, namaste from India. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Corinda. Thank you, my girl. Thank you. Thank you very much. And to all of our viewers, enjoy the retreat. <laughs>